Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're at Ring of Honor, and with us, we're privileged, our old friend, well, I don't know if he considers us friends, but Boom Boom Cold Cabana. Uh, hey, how you doing? Welcome back to Western New York. Oh, thank you very much. It's great to be here. we got a great show tonight here in Hamburg, New York. I'm excited. ROH has brought the crew to uh, Hamburg. We're going to go to Toronto tomorrow, and... Uh, Fantastic weekend of professional wrestling up here in uh, northern states slash southern Canada. Um, Colt, as you're showing us with your cap, um, there's, I guess there's no need to question you about who your favorite baseball team is in Chicago. Cubs, woo, Cubs, woo, Cubs, woo. Let me ask you this, just as back backdrop, when the White Sox did win the series, did you were you ambivalent about it, hate it? Do I love the satisfaction from uh, well, You know, I'm not. Uh, I know there's a lot of athletic fanatics out there, and I don't mean the Oakland athletics. I just mean it in terms of athletics. Uh, you know, it's give and take for me. I, I support the Cubs. I went to the Cubs game yesterday. I, you know, I, I watched them beat the athletics, actually. Uh, Fukudomi with a game-winning hit. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I, I don't hate the White Sox or love, you know, hate the Cardinals or what. You know, I just enjoy sport, and I go, I can appreciate the athleticism of these guys, and uh, and I support the Chicago Cubs. Let me ask you one more question, being from Chicago. Yep. Blackhawks recently winning the Stanley Cup. Are you a hockey fan? or? Uh, actually, when I was a kid, uh, the owner, Mr. Wirtz, took uh, the Chicago Blackhawks off of TV. So I grew up not watching the Blackhawks, and therefore uh, I never really supported the Chicago Blackhawks. So although it's good to see Chicago pride, um, I'm not a big uh, Blackhawks supporter by any means. And uh, I think I was watching uh, The Biggest Loser that night, and uh, the finale or something. I don't know. Well, that's... Which is a good show. I but I, I joined the, the Chicago uh, celebration. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, what would the celebration be without Cold Cabana? Right, exactly. But let, let's talk about Ring of Honor and your role in recently um, kind of a bloody, literally and figuratively, a bloody feud, you and El Generico against uh, Kevin Steen and uh, Steve Carell. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, it's just amazing the friendship that, uh, was that funny to you? No, you just start a bloody feud and you're talking about friendship. I'm um, sorry. It's, yeah. uh, you know what? It just, it was just... I'm going to tell a story here. Okay, I'll let you speak. I'll just shut up. Uh, man, I don't... Uh, it's amazing the friendship. <laughs> friendship. Hilarious. That uh, Kevin Steen and El Generico had, uh, you know, eight years in, in ROH are basically together as friend tag teams. Well, not in ROH, but uh, around the world. Eventually, they made they worked so hard outside of Ring of Honor, and eventually they got into Ring of Honor, uh, a true task in itself, but built themselves all the way up the card. And uh, they were like one, you know. They, they it wasn't even just friends; it was a relationship. It was like brothers. And uh, just to see what Kevin did to El Generico uh, blew my mind because I at that time. Uh, had just been uh, released by WWE. I was coming back to ROH, and uh, I was great friends with both Kevin and Generico. They both kind of took me into their little circle of friends, and then to see what that was going on with that, um, I couldn't accept what Kevin did. I couldn't really understand what he did or why he did it. So you know, uh, I was there for Generico, and I tried to be there for Kevin to understand what he was going through. But he wanted none of it. He, he seemed to take a, a different side uh, of friends with with Steve Carino. And uh, I've just my goal is to be there for El Generico as a friend uh, in wrestling. And of course, in wrestling, things get physical. Sometimes they get a little bloody, and uh, you know that's that comes to the territory. That's that's just that's just how it works here in the world of professional wrestling. It's understandable, and it's kind of gotten to that point. But tomorrow night, uh, it's uh, it's all going to be settled because finally Generico and Steen are going to get in the ring one on one, and it's going to be amazing. And I know everyone. Uh, has probably already watched it on GoFightLive.tv, but you'll, you can see the replay on GoFightLive.tv. And uh, so this is after June 19. I'm sure it was amazing. You know it was amazing. Uh, crazy shit went down, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we can say crazy on the internet. Oh, yeah, right. The other word is okay, but... Uh, because... Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, you talked briefly about your, your time in WWE. Um, many people, and I'm trying to maintain my objectivity, I can't say journalistic objectivity because that would imply that you're a journalist. Right. But um, or an maybe you're, you're, well, people have called me that. Your time there was way too short. But what did you personally draw from that experience in WWE? Uh, I drew some cartoons. I drew uh, straws. And I obviously drew the short straw, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. It was, uh, it was what it was. Uh, it's nice to be part of that, knowing that you could make it to that level and you could be accepted as one in the locker room. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I was given my uh, just due, and I, I, I've seen to uh, you know meet 
thousands of fans who feel the same way, and I'm very appreciative of that. And so, uh, you know, I'm happy to be back with a company that appreciates my my uh, my wrestling, my charisma, my character, my my fun-loving style of being, and uh, and that's ROH. So right now, I'm 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 happy. I'm ecstatic to be part of ROH wrestling, and uh, and yeah. So I mean, the WWE it was what it was. I was there. Uh, you know, the little eight-year-old Colt Cabana could say uh, he made it to, to what he used to watch as a kid, and now it's time to move on. So, uh, best of luck to them and their future endeavors. Future endeavors. Um, you're a, uh, a former tag team champion here in ROH. How, yeah. how important are title belts to wrestlers, whether they be tag or individual? Uh, that's that's what it's all come down to. That's, that's the uh, the gold medal. That's the, uh, the hot chocolate sundae, you know, that you finish at the end of the meal. It's uh, that's what we're working for here, and I'm, uh, you know, I love to go out and entertain, uh, but to be a champion, you know, in any aspect of life, you know, if it's the spelling bee champion, or I myself, the 1993 Deerfield Illinois Hopscotch champion, uh, and hopefully one day uh, ROH heavyweight champion or uh, world champion, um, but a tag team championship with my my good friend CM Punk, we're the two times uh, former two time ROH tag team champions. And uh, I remember those days greatly. Uh, very fond, very proud to, uh, to call my brother Punk uh, my 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 tag team partner and a fellow champion. And uh, you know, I guess I'm I'm almost maybe it's it's a need to look for uh, another partner. You know, maybe it's an El Generico or maybe it's somebody like uh, Grizzly Redwood. I don't know. You know, it's hard. I'm, I'm reaching out. I don't know if anybody's uh, reaching out. You know, and grabbing my hand. But we'll see. Uh, We'll see, one day, you know, I'm looking for some, some gold, you know, go, I'm the gold man, I'm looking for some gold here in our age. Well, you, you mentioned you want to be a champion of everything you're doing, correct me if I'm wrong, but you recently stepped into the stand-up comedy world. Yeah, been doing... Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, I've been doing uh, some stand-up, some improv in Chicago, I'm uh, every Wednesday night at Comedy Sports in Chicago, Illinois, it's uh, Comedy Sports Chicago, uh, cszchicago.com, you come see me. Wednesday nights all through the summer, that's through September if you're in town. Uh, and I do improv comedy, I do stand-up comedy, and I'm just exploring, I'm, I'm spreading my wings. And uh, you know, I've done some commercial work and some, and some TV work, so just kind of, you know, jumping in the eye. I'm an entertainer, no one's gonna ever deny that Coco Man is an entertainer. And uh, so I'm just exploring some different avenues, and I'm having a great time with it. Well, there's one final question in that vein. I remember I spoke with you a couple years ago, and you educated or schooled me on the glory that is the Empire Carpet name. Right. Do, do you can see yourself doing like voiceover work for something like that? That would be great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, he's the king, the king of Empire. I think that's him calling right now. Is that? Is this like breaking news or? The um, the Empire Carpet guy. Uh, okay, I'm gonna oh, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's, do your business. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Mr. Good okay. luck to you. <laughs> oh, I gotta, I gotta. Call the carpet guy. Guys, guy, sorry. Hello, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 I'd love to be in here. No, 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 right? Uh-huh, yeah. Right, seven, seven, three, two, oh, two, 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 Carpet man. Yeah, 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 see? I'm a jingle man, good, good. All right, we'll catch you later, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for viewing. This is Ivan the Impaler.